Yo, check out my website, www.theclowntimes.net. That's clown spell because you see here. As you see, here are my rants here. I'll be more and more regular in posting rants in the future. You see what I have going on here. Also, you can also get your merch here at www.cafepress.com. Search for the Clown Times Sports. You see here I have uh, sweatshirts, uh, hoodies, baby gear, mugs, T-shirts. So just come on over. And grab yourself some merch. Florida State's still unbeaten. Florida State's in the catbird seat, if you will, for the college football playoff, because you've seen the rankings. They came out last night. They have Florida State in the four hole, which I don't have a problem with because, you know, they don't have the resume that the Georgia, Ohio State, even, with, even though that's debatable, actually, that's debatable. In Michigan, it's like, come on. They, they, they're a good team, but they haven't played it yet, except for Penn State, which they handle Penn State, so they are in a spot too. But I always say, guys, that this is early in the process because more like more more likely than not, everything will work itself out in the end. However, I noticed that Louisville is at number nine, which is a good spot. To, no, number 10, I'm sorry. Number 10, which is a decent spot to be in given their resume, you know, the biggest win being Notre, at being, uh, I guess, Notre Dame. I look at the other teams in front of them. I'm like, really? He's still going to stick him in the 10 hole. But nevertheless, uh, it's still shaping up for if Louisville were to win out and Florida State were to, obviously, they're going to beat Northern, Northern Alabama. I mean, come on. But if they beat Florida on the road the following week, which they should, they should set up for a very interesting AC championship game. But it's it's going to the, the AC if the AC championship game could get muddled more than that but nevertheless Jeff I ask you this um do you albeit it's still early in the process do you do you have any qualms with the uh, college football playoff rankings in week two of it if you will no I mean. I think, you know, having Georgia number one, uh, you know, finally they, they, after two months, they got started, you know, the real part of their schedule where they, you know, started playing de some decent teams. And, and I, I mean, I think we can, you know, admit they look pretty good. Uh, I mean, they struggled with, with Missouri, but Missouri's turned out to be, be pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. They're yeah, pretty I good. Agree. And then they, you know, they, they took apart Ole Miss. They got Tennessee this week. Um, and then they'll have the uh, SEC championship. Not, I'm not forgetting about Georgia Tech, but you know, let, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, you know, Georgia <laughs> Tech's just not equipped to, to 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 really compete with Georgia right now. Sure. Um, sure. So I, I have no problem with Georgia at one. Um, I think after that, like you kind of talked about at the beginning, um, I, I I know they've they've got um, Ohio State at two, and they they put them up there because they. They, they gave them a lot of credit for that Notre Dame win. But, I mean, Louisville's beat them. Clemson beat them. Right. You know, let, let's not act like that win is, is all that great. And Penn State, you know, the win over Penn State, you know, if you're a top 10 team, who, who doesn't beat Penn State? That, that's <laughs> they, I mean, every every year they're going to lose to Ohio State and Michigan. Right. So, right. you know, let, let's not get carried away with, with that win, and especially with Michigan, who, who you know, they – they went, you know, a good nine weeks here, you know, prepping for, for, for Penn State, you know, with that with that atrocious schedule they played. And, yeah. you know, we saw in that game, yeah, they, they handled their business. There's no question about that. But, I mean, when you have two months to prepare for a game, I would expect you to win. Right, uh, right. So, you know, and then you have Florida State at, at four and – you know, Washington at five. I, I think you could interchange Washington. I think if you wanted to go by resume, you could you could have Washington up there at two or three. I but agree with that. Yeah, well, but what I like about it is that they've made it clear that these are the five best teams, and I don't see a scenario where if four of them are undefeated, you won't have four undefeated teams. I've seen a couple things out there that said, oh, is should Florida State you know, be concerned if they're undefeated, you know, with a one loss Michigan or Ohio State team, 
and and that just is absurd to me. I don't even understand. Yeah. I don't even know how that can be a discussion, right. or or you know, or start getting into a discussion of if if it comes down to one loss teams between Texas and Alabama. I mean, to me, that's just insane. Yeah, that Texas beat Alabama. <laughs> Texas beat Alabama, and and handily beat them in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Correct. You know, and if if we're not gonna, if all things are equal, and we're not going to you know, take head to head into account that, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't care if uh, Alabama has looked good in the last few weeks because they beat LSU in a, in kind of a route. Yeah. So did Florida state, you know, let's, let's, right. <laughs> you know, right. it, it is, let, let's not act like that, that Florida, that Alabama has just, you know, taken down the best teams in the country left and right. And even if they beat Georgia, if, if, if it's between Texas and, and Alabama somehow, I, I don't see how you can take Alabama over Texas. You lost on your home field by double digits. Right. You know, um, right. but right now I, I don't see a scenario where Ohio State, Michigan loser stays in the field. So the way it sets up now, if you win, you take care of business, you're going to be in the playoffs. Right. Exactly. That's why, like I said, and plus Ohio State, to your point, Ohio State and Michigan will have to play each other. So that's yeah. going to cancel That's going to cancel it out. And, and to your point, the winner of that game, along with Georgia, Florida State, and Washington, they all stay unbeaten and went out. Those are your top four teams. Yeah. You, I mean, you cannot <laughs> convince me in any way that the loser of that game should remain in the top four over any of the other undefeated right. teams. You just, there's just right. no way you can convince me if Michigan loses that game, they would have gone the entire season playing one team with a pulse that they beat by nine points. Yeah. So yeah. you you can't argue Michigan in. And if, if Ohio state loses uh, that game, you're, you're looking at a resume that's almost, it's better than Michigan's, right. but you can't justify them getting into the playoff with a close win over Penn State and a three-point win over a Notre Dame team that lost to the best teams that played on their schedule. Right. You know, the three best teams Notre Dame played, uh, Louisville, Ohio yep. State. Yep. Oh, well, actually, I mean, you might can argue that Clemson may or may not have been the third best team, but they lost to them. I think they might be. I think they, they, they might be. The they might be team. actually, if you because know, because look, comes look up. who they play. Who look who's uh, Notre, I'm gonna go to their, their schedule right quick. Um, Notre Dame has played NC State, Central Michigan, Tennessee State. They they should have lost to Duke. Um, yeah, they should have lost to Duke. And Pitt, they crushed Pitt, and they got Wake Forest, and they're at Stanford to close the season. So yes, those three teams they lost to. Or arguably the three best teams in their schedule. Yeah, so you can't convince me. <laughs> you, you're not going to put Ohio State into the playoff if they lose to Michigan on the basis of beating Notre Dame and Penn State. I'm sorry. No, it's, no, you it's, can't do that. You just can't. So take care of business. You're going to be in. Right. That's that's called like a intellectual malpractice, if you just assume that. Um, how about you, Matthew? How, what are your thoughts on the college football playoff? I don't have a lot to add to what Jeff said. He covered it pretty well, but I would actually go a step farther and say (laughs) that if Washington is undefeated at the, the, at the end of the season, they should be the number one seed because nobody has played the resume that Washington has had all year. They have gone through a game of Thrones November so far, Mm -hmm. and they've done pretty well. And they've, they've arguably done, very well. I mean, I think they have a an extreme trap game coming up in in Corvallis. There's all, all yeah. kinds of bad things that happen in that ta- in that town, especially when you're playing a team that's probably upset that they got passed over in conference alignment. They're playing two coincidentally. They're playing two teams and two teams directly mm-hmm. in a, in a, in a row, right? Well, all, right. Oregon State this week and Wazoo next week. Right. And, and, you know, that both those teams are going to want a piece of Washington. But if if Washington gets through there, they, they're going to be on they're going to be undefeated. And, I, and, and, you know, we'll find out whether they can win the Pac-12 championship game or not. Right. But they should be if they get through, they should be the number one seed. And and I want to go a little a step further in criticality here than Je- Jeff did on Michigan. 
I would argue that Michigan only plays a team with an offensive pulse one week a year. <laughs> right? That is wrong? true. With an offensive pulse, because Penn, Penn State, I've said for weeks, has no offense. And they just fired, and from what I understand, they, I think yeah, they, they just fired, fired their yeah, offensive fired, coordinator. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's just, a they, great point. That's they a did. great point. And so they, they you know, I, I look forward to, you know, them, I look forward to them actually playing a team, with, you know, that has a decent, a decent offense. We'll find out more about that. But I, you know, if, if any of these teams are ahead, if Washington is undefeated mm-hmm. and any of these other teams are ahead of Washington with the schedule that they played, we have a serious problem because the PAC 12 has had quite frankly, the best, best year as a conference that I can remember perhaps right. in a generation. It's, it's been by far the best league. This year, it's 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 the rear of the Pac-12 and everybody else. We used to say that about the SEC. I mean, because if you look at the Pac-12, dude, you got Washington, who's in the college football playoff ranking. You have Oregon, Washington, Arizona, Oregon State, um, SC for a little while. Um, well, SC obviously, but Washington State was ranked for a little while. You had that's six teams at UCLA too. That's 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 seven. Seven squads. That's a gauntlet out of 12. That's a damn gauntlet. So I'm just, but I mean, because if you look at Georgia, it's schedule. I mean, it's not even close. It's, it's not even close. But I will say this, and I think this is BS what they're doing in Washington, but I think I know why they're being built. Look at the games, speaking of Arizona, look at the game against Arizona, the games against Arizona, Stanford. And especially Arizona State at home, where they barely beat Arizona State at home, right? They, I think they're holding that and the Stanford win, where they eked out a win, um, and the Arizona win as well. I think, well, particularly the Arizona State and Stanford game, they're holding that against Washington. And I think that's not right. I, I think that's BS. A win is a win. And I, I think that people, when you have like rankings from people, that it tends to be subjective anyway. Which is why I always said, let's go back to the computer, the, the the computer model. At least the computer model took out the bias. It took out the subjectivity. It just ranked it factored the rankings in addition to the other rankings. It factored in strip of schedule. Right? So that alone, and I don't have the at the RPI or sacred rate in front of me, but I'm pretty sure Washington's much higher than fifth in those ratings because they take into account the strength of schedule. So to me, to Matthew's point, the fact that Washington is not ranked number one is criminal. It's totally criminal. If you if you base that on, Jeff, if you base that on strength of schedule, if strength of schedule, if like the people in the room led by Boo Kerrigan at NC State uh, 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 AD, if they say strength of schedule, why the hell is not Washington number one. I don't understand that. I, I don't know. There, there, there seems to be this love affair with with Ohio State and and uh, Michigan. I mean, if if Georgia runs the table, includes a win over Alabama in the SEC title game. I mean, I'll listen to an argument sure. yeah. of, with their resume, but I mean, if you're going by pure resume. Washington should be no worse than number two if at the end of the season they run the table. And, um, you know, right now they're, and, and, and I think it'll start to sort itself out. It's, it seems to be that if uh, Washington goes to Corvallis and beats Oregon State, a lot of people think that they'll, they'll jump ahead of Florida State into that fourth position. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like we said, as long as we don't see the loser of the Washington or the Michigan Ohio State game in the mix, yeah. um, th- if if that happens, if they're still in the mix, the loser of that game, there should be an absolute investigation, <laughs> yeah. because we know yeah. that the winner of that game, you know, is going to have a layup in the Big Ten title game against, you know, an Iowa team that can't even cross midfield half the time, <laughs> uh, you know, so fire their offensive coordinator too, but go ahead, yeah, fire their <laughs> offensive coordinator. You know, mm-hmm. I think at the, are they going to? Is he fired or going to be at the end of the season? But I mean, yeah. we all know about Iowa and that that Michigan or Ohio State's going to win that game by a bazillion. 
Mm-hmm. So they should get no credit for that game, <laughs> where at least Florida State, for example, is going to get at the very least a, a nine win. You know, even if Louisville were to lose its last two games, I guess I could open up to. We're, we're not quite all the way there with a with Louisville in the ACC title game, but my mm-hmm. expectation is that they will meet at, at least a ten win uh, Louisville team because I think they're winning at least one of their last two. But I mean, yeah. the bottom line is. You know, if we see a Michigan or Ohio State in the four-team playoff with an, any debate with the other four undefeated teams, it should be an investigation. I, I agree with that. And 